shaping up to be a gorgeous day in the Rose City as we welcome you to campus for a pilot doubleheader as the Portland women's team opens up our action today against Loyola Marymount for a WCC clash. Welcome inside the Child Center. I'm Brian Slag, joined by my broadcast partner, Joel Sobotka. So these two teams coming in, Portland elated with a huge win over BYU, but it comes with the loss of Haley Andrews. Meanwhile, LMU's coming in with a tough WCC schedule under first-year head coach Erica Hughes. So what are you expecting between these two teams today, Joel? Well, it's going to be a really emotional game, I think, for the Pilots. Um, a huge win on Thursday over BYU. Um, obviously, losing Haley Andrews such a huge loss that I think you're going to need a collective effort um, and to see how they respond coming back a couple days later. And for the Lions, you know, coming off a tough loss to Pepperdine, you know, going to play the Pilots back-to-back. -back, um, a homecoming for Coach Hughes that I think they're going to be fired up and ready to go. Yeah, well, there's a ton of athletes on the court today, but none bigger for LMU than Ari Johnson. She's Miss Do It All for the Lions. She really is, and today it's going to be uh, you know, really special for her as far as handling the press, handling the matchup zone that the pilots will show, and, and she's going to play a lot of minutes. She she is what makes them go you know, offensively, and it's not only just from the three-point line, it's getting the basket, it's getting other people involved. Well, LMU upset the pilots last season in the WCC tournament. How do they pull it off again today? Well, I think first and foremost, they got to take care of the basketball. They can't give Portland easy opportunities off of turnovers. Um, and they got to shoot the ball better. I think Coach Hughes made that comment after Thursday's game. They got to make some shots. You know, you're going to beat the press, you're going to have opportunities, um, and, and they got to attack Portland's bigs inside. All right, for Portland, the absence of one of the league's best guards, Haley Andrews, she's out. That puts a bit more pressure on Alex Fowler. It really does. Um, coming off just a, a remarkable game on Thursday against BYU, not only did she score the ball from different points, she made three, she made free throws, she scored in side she had eight assists you know and and just so much of that load was already on her that i think she's gonna even pick up more but i look for other pilots to step up as well well the pilots they love to defend home court how do they do it today joel i think they got to get the press working early they've got to wear down the lions you know get after the guards a little bit force some turnovers create some easy opportunities on offense from their defense um, and then on the flip side they've got to rebound the ball they got to take it so they can get out and transition and go all right, we've got Lions and Pilots on deck. Portland looks to stay atop the conference, while LMU looking for an upset bid. Starters and tip on the other side. Welcome back inside the Child Center. Brian Schleich and Joel Sabatka with your call for LMU versus Portland as the starting lineups are being announced. In fact, let's get you those starting lineups for both sides out there for Loyola Marymount today. It's going to be Cassie Gordon, Nicole Rodriguez, Ari Johnson, Jasmine Jones, and Alexis Mark out there for the Pilots. Rose Flug getting the start. Maddie Molheim, Keely Frawley, Alex Fowler, and Lucy Cochran. Now, the Pilots are going to have to adjust after losing Haley Andrews in the last game. So that's why you're seeing Rose Flug in the starting lineup. Only her second start on the season so far. But she came up huge with some big baskets in that game against BYU. She really did. And I think one, especially right before the half, she had a great drive to the rim and finish. And I think it gave the Pilots some confidence uh, heading into the locker room. And then came out in the second half and had a couple of big, big baskets that uh, really helped propel them to the victory on Thursday. 
On the sideline for the Portland Pilots, third year head coach Mike Meek. 280 career wins, 49 for the Portland Pilots. He's just done a terrific job on the bluff in his short time. He really is. He's one of the best teachers of the game that I've ever been around and, and seeing the improvement, the steady player development that you see with this program, uh, it's going to continue. And then on the other side, Erica Hughes, a name you should get familiar with. She actually played for Coach Meek back in high school when Coach Meek was at Southridge and won a couple of state titles as well. She did right on this court. Um, she graduated in this building. I think she, she said it's sort of surreal coming back into the Child Center for her, but uh, a homecoming for her. Lions are wearing blue, LMU in red across the chest. Portland in their home whites with Portland in purple across the chest. And the Pilots win the opening tip. Darren Kresnick, Anita Ortega, and Michael Watts are the referees for today's game. It'll be interesting to see how LMU plays the post from Portland. They had such a big game on Thursday. Um, great, great sign there. Frawley getting with, in on the action. With the three early. And she only had those three points against BYU. But they were huge. That shot gave them that lead again. And really, the Pilots just took that one and kept running. And that's how they got that big lead at the end. It is. And here they are setting the press. I think this is going to be a huge key to the game is how LMU handles this press. Gave BYU plenty of fits on Thursday. Johnson, the long pass up to Gordon. And quickly, the Lions are through the press. And they'll take it out beyond the three-point line and slow things down. Pilots in their matchup zone. They'll get to man-to-man -to -man out of this zone, and I think LMU's prepared for that. And we got a three-second violation. I believe that one was on Jasmine Jones. Still will cause some issues, though. What offense do you run? You run your zone offense, your man offense. Well, Coach Meeks has done a good job all season. He, mixing up the defenses against every single opponent he goes up against, and it's paying dividends. Frawley forcing it inside to Fowler. That pass broken up by Gordon. It'll stay with the Pilots. Be tough inside for LMU. If they're going to front the post, you're going to see the Pilots look to play a little high-low with their two posts. Moheim in the corner. Program's all-time three-point field goal leader. Cochran, the pass across the paint to Fowler. The foul is on the ground, so no shot. Two of the best passing posts you'll see in college basketball. Uh, combined for 13 assists on Thursday against BYU. It's just unheard of for posts. I mean, willing passers, very skilled. Fowler actually set a new career high with eight assists in that win over BYU. Now she gets the inbound pass and fouled underneath. We'll see if that's on Johnson or Jones. And that'll be on Johnson. So her first, team second. Fowler is so dangerous that once she gets it inside, it, it drawing contact and getting to the line, and excellent free throw shooter. Fowler, 23 points in that win against BYU. She's averaging 18.3 on the season, and she's a 71% free throw shooter. Here she knocks down both. And then the, set the press again, get right back into it. And that's exactly how they got that big lead on BYU, is forcing the turnovers on this side of the court, and they do it again. Fowler looking for position down Ooh. low. Flew with it, going up against Jasmine Jones. Splitting the defense all the way to the hoop in a layup. Just like she did on Thursday, attacking the rim, getting to a layup, and again, set the press. Pilots on a 7-0 run to start today's game. Coach Hughes said one of the biggest keys for them was not turning the ball over, handling the press and the pressure. Already two turnovers for the Lions, and Ari Johnson, the floater off the glass and in. Very dangerous. She can put it on the floor, she can get to the free throw line, scores at different levels, and she's gonna be a huge key for them today. She's a transfer from the University of Florida, and as a freshman, she started near every game for the Gators. You really have to be a baller in the SEC to do that. You really do, and it comes from an excellent program. St. Mary's of Stockton, we're a championship program in the state of California. And um, I think earlier this year, she had a 30-point game in 24 minutes. Turnover by the Pilots. Leads to possession for the Lions. Double teamed, Moheim in the face of Johnson. She lost it. It'll stay with the Lions can see that pressure not only in the full court but in the half court and uh, Ari's going to play a lot of minutes she's going to see a lot of traps today 
You know, talking with Coach Hughes earlier today. Now, in their last game, they only played seven players. And with these two games in three days, she said she's going to have to go deeper into her bench. Some of the freshmen might even have to play for her. Without question, I don't think they can play at this pace for this long and, and still be as productive as they need them to be scoring the ball and shooting and making shots. Let's push it on the other side. Frawley trying to get it into Cochran. Into the paint. Now she's double teamed. Take it away. You can see the immediate help from LMU when it does go inside. They're going to dig down and try to get that ball out of there. Foul called on Keeley Frawley. That'll be her first and the team's first. And Cochran set a new career high, 18 points against BYU. And it was really her mid-range game that helped the Pilots. Well, and five steals as well for your center in you know, protecting that basket in the press. To have the presence back there to block a shot or make a steal is, is just huge for your press. Five steals, also a career high for Cochran. Lions just have not seemed comfortable in this early couple of minutes in this contest. Alexis Mark taking it with the left hand, never caught the rim, offensive rebound, and Jasmine Jones gets it to go near the baseline. They're going to need those second shots. They're going to need to finish around the rim and get some of those layups to help their percentage. Moheim unloads a three. And that's a player that's really going to need to step up shooting-wise for the Pilots. With the absence of Haley Andrews, you're going to need everybody to score some points now. We talked about that with Coach Meek, a collective effort. No one player can replace Haley, but everybody stepping up their game, I think, will be huge for them today. Andrews, before she got hurt, ranked 16th in the nation in assists per game. She's such a facilitator for this offense, gets things going. And she'll be missed, no doubt. Another offensive rebound for the Lions. Pushing it across the court to Rodriguez. She's dangerous from behind the arc. Jones gathers at the free throw line and hits the jumper. Extra possessions for the Lions so far have been huge, even though they've had a few turnovers. That's four points out of their six on second chance opportunities. Jones steals it away from Cochran. Stops. Using the glass, no good. Flug went up with a couple of lines around her. And it'll go to the Pilots. Kai Tu'u, Meek, and Bruno checking in. Kari Clark checks in for the Lions along with number one Aspen Adams. Adams is a player you also need to watch out for. She shoots the ball incredibly well. Didn't play last season because of COVID, but two seasons ago she did work inside the Child Center against these Pilots. Yeah, dangerous from three. You can see strategy-wise right, right now, the Lions are going to pressure the post on the perimeter and look to front and side, try to take away that height advantage. See Rodriguez in front. Trying to get the pass across the paint to MJ Bruno, and no touch by LMU. It'll be Lions basketball. Great job so far by the Lions pressuring and, and forcing the Pilots into a couple turnovers on the high-low action. Returning to the Lions, number 32. Ari Johnson checking back in. Cassie Gordon to the bench. Again, still a four-point lead for the Pilots. They lead 10 to six. Johnson in trouble, getting double teamed by Meek and Bruno, and she lost it. Kai Tu'u ends up with it. Bruno stops, pushes it out to Moheim. Oh, her second three! What a great look by Bruno just to find her in transition and, and for her to find the three-point line. I was gonna say, I just stepped right into that shot. Right back to the press. And that's a Meek special. Johnson up to Kari Clark, off her hands and out of bounds. That's the sixth turnover now for Loyola Marymount. And we're just over halfway through this first quarter. And that'll send us to media 13 to six. Pilots enjoying the seven point lead. 444 to go. Moheim with two daggers from behind the arc to push that lead for the Pilots.
Well, talking with Coach Hughes before today's game, taking care of the basketball was a big key and also protecting the three-point line. Molheim's got two, and meanwhile, the Pilots have turned six LMU turnovers into seven points. It happens quick and in spurts, and that's what the Pilots thrive upon, and, and to see Maddie making two threes right out of the gate is a great sign for the Pilots. She had nine points in the first half a couple of games ago. And that was huge for Portland, getting her in the groove, getting that ball into the basket. LMU goes to the zone, which uh, Coach Meek and the Pilots were expecting. Worked quite a bit against the zone yesterday in practice. Burnham shot off the mark. It'll be one and done for the Pilots. Aspen Adams, good take it all the way. And we got a foul. Off ball. Yeah, on the, on the layup, I think their first post setting a kind of a moving screen to allow her to get to the rim. Yeah, Kari, call. Yep, Kari Clark called for it. You see it right there on the screen against Kai Tu'u. Back to man-to-man -to -man for the Lions. Fowler out to MJ Bruno. Missing there again, settling for a three-point opportunity. So far, LMU really looking to attack the pressure. Um, get the ball up the floor as quick as they can. The Pilots back to the matchup zone. Johnson gets it in to Mark. And, and the elbow there. jumper, no good. Pilots swing it around the outside. Mikkel Meek wants in from the action from beyond the arc. No good. Long rebound for Bruno. Great hustle by Bruno. Another extra possession. Lions in the zone, good high-low look. Kai Tu'u, the feed to Fowler underneath. Such willing passers to pose for the Pilots, just really have their head up, always seeing the open person. Johnson gets through the pressure of Bruno, almost double-teamed by Meek and Bruno. LMU has not scored in two minutes and 15 seconds. Spent a lot of energy getting it across half court. Shot clock down to 10. Johnson partially blocked by Fowler. Burnham fighting off her man and gets the open ball. Adams intercepts that pass. And we'll see who the foul is going to be on. It'll be on MJ Bruno. That'll be her first and the team's second. You can already see the pilot's depth sort of taking its toll. Here comes three more new players back in, um, continuing to rotate fresh bodies in and, and keep that pressure on LMU. Flute, Moheim, and Cochran in. It's a great look behind the zone. MJ Bruno at the front of the press is really, really tough. Puts so much pressure on the ball handler. What a steal. Oh, Maisie Burnham takes it away. Bolheim's hit two already. Oh, in and out. Offensive rebound for the Pilots. Pass inside, broken up by Alexis Mark. Even in the zone, the LMU posts are having to work extremely hard to keep the ball away from Cochran and, and Fowler as well. We're on a three-minute drought now for the Lions to get a basket, and the pass broken up by Bruno. Cochran ends up with it. It's now seven turnovers for the Lions. First since the media break. Lions back to man-to-man. -man. Burnham with it, top of the key. Puts nice. it on the ground. Nice to see her back playing in this game. Didn't play on Thursday, gives the Pilots another, you know, threat from three-point range. Four seconds on the shot clock. Flug has to take it all the way off the glass. Oh, she gets the bounce. Fearless. Fearless to the rim. 17 to 6, an 11-point lead now for the Pilots as Alexis Mark takes it up. A high dribble. Coach Meek wanted something called for it, and it'll go out of bounds. And it'll go with the Pilots. I think the press has really sped LMU up. They want to attack it, but if it's not your primary ball handler, sometimes bad things can happen as you get going a little too fast. It's now five turnovers in the last five and a half minutes for LMU. Meanwhile, Portland on a 7-0 run over the last four minutes. Moheim picks up her dribble. Flew with the back cut to the hoop. Gives it to Cochran. Burnham's fighting hard, going up against Jasmine Jones near the block. Really working to get around. 
Moheim no good. Frawley, the extra effort for the rebound. We got a jump ball and it'll go towards the Lions. But that's one of the things that Coach Meek really loves about Frawley. She does the dirty work, goes after the rebounds, and does the extra effort plays. She anticipates that shot going up, knowing that it's a good shot for a three-point shooter and goes. And, and to be a great offensive rebounder, the first thing you have to do is go pursue the ball, and she did that. Hard foul as Alexis Mark and Maisie Burnham get tangled up near half court. Both players okay. Both players checked in on each other as well. And so Burnham will pick up the foul. That's her first team's third. And just fortunate that nobody got hurt right there. Cassie Gordon set to inbound the ball. What would you like to see LMU do right now? They're down 11. It seems like the pressure from Portland has really caused some problems for LMU. They haven't gotten a, a clean look other than a little bit the high post there. There's a nice job of passing the post, getting a layup. That's exactly under control, not forcing things with the dribble. Beating things with the pass, I think, is how you're going to beat that defense. Kari Clark with that basket for the Lions. Burnham going up against Jones. LMU's pressure in the perimeter, trying to front the post a little bit to keep the ball out of there, and it's giving Portland some opportunities to go one-on-one -on -one with that pressure up in them. They can, they can go by them. Clark heads to the bench. Rodriguez back out on the floor for LMU. Jones picked up her first foul. That's the team's fourth. LMU back in the zone. Burnham with it. Out to Flug. That one's off the mark. And Frawley fighting for that ball. Johnson had it for Tremendous a second, and now hustle. it's Mohai on the long rebound. Winning plays by the Pilots, getting those extra possessions, long rebounds. Pilots around the outside, about four seconds between shot clock and game clock. And pass intercepted by Alexis Mark. She's looking up at the clock, puts it up with three seconds left, and no good. But she got her own rebound and puts it up. Are they going to count it? And they do. They do count it. It's 17 to 10. LMU gets the last second bucket before the buzzer. Pilots leading by seven. Kai Tu feeding Fowler. Adding on to that lead for Portland. We'll be right back.
Pilots are out to a seven-point lead, 17 to 10 over LMU. They started out hot, four for four from the field. They pulled off a bit, just two for seven to end that first quarter. But LMU started to get some things going for them. And you talked about it. The passing game is how they're going to get through this Pilots defense. I think those direct passes against the matchup zone, that's where they're going to get open looks as opposed to trying to dribble through pressure and dribble out of traps. And when they did that and they were under control, they made two, three passes in a row and they got a good look for a layup. Portland will get the ball to start the second quarter. And you look at the scoring for LMU, eight points out of their 10 come from the paint. And how do they get that going a bit more, a bit more, I guess, fluid into the game? I think they need to get some stops at this end and get Johnson and uh, Rodriguez out in transition a little bit. We got a three second violation called on Alex Fowler. So a turnover for Portland. And Megan Mandel checking into the game for LMU. She's starting the second quarter for the Lions. She did not play in that loss to Pepperdine. You had talked about Coach Hughes saying, gonna need some more from their bench, and I think especially inside, they're gonna need some people to play. It's a great opportunity there to break the press. Johnson with the ball. Crawley on defense. And that's an opening right in the zone, and that's hurt the Pilots a couple times this season. They're fortunate, that one's halfway down and out. Great look. Cochran, the only starter that hasn't scored yet for Portland. Fowler gets tangled up on the floor. Fowler puts so much pressure on a defense in transition. She runs to that rim and, and finds position, and it just it forces everybody to be aware of what she's doing. That's one of the big pluses for her. She's just so good in that transition role. And there's a lot of times she's leading that transition. Rodriguez to Johnson. Back to Rodriguez. Great cut. The spin move underneath. Cochran might have gotten a hand on it. Mandel had the rebound ripped away by Rose Flug. Up to Fowler. There's that transition play we were just talking about. She's so good as she runs so hard and she just finishes everything. She does a great job finding position and finishing plays at the rim. Now the biggest lead for Portland. They are up by nine. Mandel back out to Rodriguez. She's fortunate to get to that one. So far, no shots from beyond the arc for LMU. They've got a couple of strong shooters. They're doing a nice job of getting the ball to the high post, just like there, and then finding opportunities around the rim. But the pressure from the pilots is starting to take its toll. Shot clock closing in on zero. The shot, no good. And Moheim had the rebound, and she gets fouled. The constant pressure, whether it be from the press or even in the matchup zone for the Pilots, it starts to wear and take its toll on players. You can see some of the LMU players looking, you know, a little fatigued, and I think that's get back to what Coach you said about being able to go to that bench. Yeah, I'm looking at three different players right now, hands on the hips, trying to get that extra breath in. Emily Sewell into the game, and who I thought had some huge minutes for the Pilots on Thursday. Great drive. MJ Bruno with the finish. And she's somebody who's getting used to this role as a guard. When she was in high school, she was playing both a forward and a guard, and now it's just all guard for her. So she's still transitioning into that role. She brings so much energy defensively. That was a great opportunity there for Johnson. She got all the way to the rim and just, you know, couldn't convert, but, you know, She's a type of guard that can go end-to-end -end with the ball and finish. Bruno trying to yep. pick the pocket, she does. Great lead pass up to Mikkel Meek, and she just gets to it before it goes out of bounds. Back to Bruno. And miscommunication, and the Pilots fortunate enough to keep possession with 16 on the shot clock. You think you break the press, you get across half court, you turn your back, and then here comes MJ with the steal. And MJ was looking for that ball from across the court. You could see her eyeing it. Two on the shot clock. Meek puts up the floater, and that one never hit rim. That'll be a shot clock violation. Aspen Adams checking in, and Ari Johnson. And we have a timeout on the floor. 
And we'll send it to break, 21 to 10. Pilots with an 11 point lead, just under seven minutes to go until halftime. MJ Bruno getting in on the action. Welcome back inside the Child Center. Brian Slyke, Joel Slovakko with your call. 21 to 10, the Pilots are leading LMU. And looking at some of the stats right now, LMU shooting wise was shooting 50% in that first quarter, but it all comes back to turning the ball over. They had nine turnovers right now. They average 18 on the season. You know, and you know you're going to turn the ball over against the press, but it's it's those turnovers that turn into baskets, and then they're able to set the press again. And, and you know, obviously, haven't had a chance to get off a three-point shot yet or a free throw, and I think that's where they're going to need to get to the free throw line. Aspen Adams going up against Liana Kai Tu'u in the backcourt. Needs to get across the timeline, and that's it. That's 10 seconds. 10 seconds, five, eight, five. Again, the trap comes when you least expect it. Um, I think Portland doing a very, very good job of defending without fouling right now. And it looked like she had Johnson open on the near side just in front of us, but unable to get it to her. Pilots keeping it outside. Kai Tu'u spinning in the paint, using the glass in the rim. Very under control, great finish. And MJ Bruno is going to pick up the foul. That'll be her second personal. And the first one on the Pilots in this quarter. Johnson back in after a very, very short rest. And you have to imagine that's just going to be the normal play for her. Get her maybe a minute off on the bench and catch her breath and get her back out there. She played 37 minutes the other night and Rodriguez played 39 at, against Pepperdine. And Great Luke. anticipation. Yep, flying in there, getting a hand on it. And if my memory serves me correct, she had a similar play against BYU, which helped the Pilots down the stretch. Watch this mark. Has it. Now to Rodriguez. Near the free throw line. She takes it out beyond the three-point line. Lost it. Got it back. Takes it to the hoop. Alexis Mark. Great awareness by Mark to see that there was nobody on her in that zone. She found the opening and took it all away. They need those easy baskets. You know, it's not been easy at all, and those those are going to add up. Sewell, Meek, Frawley, and Kai Tu'u, along with Flug, out on the court for Portland. Gordon, Mark, Rodriguez, Clark, and Johnson for LMU. Kai Tu'u using her body to get to the glass. And we got an offensive foul. Sort of lowered the shoulder a little bit going with her left hand. And nice job by the LMU defender to step in. Second foul on the Pilots in this quarter. The first one on Kai, too. And there you see it. Yeah, she just lowered her shoulder almost right into the chest of Cassie Gordon. Cochran checking back in for Portland. 
Meek applying the full court pressure. Frawley popping up now on Johnson. She picks up her dribble and gets it to Alexis Mark. Not a great spot to pick up your dribble. And a third Portland foul. This one is going to be on Keely Frawley, her second. When you foul in the press, it not only it stops the clock, it allows them to reset, but they also get a little bit of a rest. And you don't want to put them in the bonus. Of course, they're now two fouls away from getting two free throws. Five fouls in a quarter. Leads to free throws in the women's game. Cassie Gordon, free throw jumper using the glass. The high post has been open for LMU and uh, looking not only for shot, but also looking for a pass down below. Meek gets it to Cochran. Crawley now with it. Kai Tu'u. In against Gordon. And that one's short. Really solid defensive job by LMU. They've sort of settled in a little bit defensively the last few possessions, not allowing penetration and making it really hard to get the ball in the post. You think that last charge by Kai Tu'u affected her on that last possession? A little bit. I think she was hesitant going down the stretch with the clock going down. But, you know, LMU did a nice job of just staying in front. So they threw the press, 20 on the shot clock. Again, no three-point shots so far for LMU. They've been getting into that spot in the zone near the free throw line. Ball's loose. Clark has it. Eight on the shot clock. And I think that'll be on Kai too. It is. I think that was a concern and a key for Coach Meek was to be able to defend Johnson without fouling. You know, she's really difficult to stay in front and she gets that opportunity to get to the free throw line or, you know, she's an excellent free throw shooter as well. Kai Tu'u picks up her second. That's the fourth Portland foul this quarter. Next one will put LMU on the line. And another turnover for LMU. See if the Pilots can end their two minute and 15 second drought and almost turned it over. Fowler chased it down. Cochran faces up. That one's long. LMU hasn't had a lot of opportunities just in transition on a, on a missed shot by the Pilots. You know, trying to get down and get some offense before the Pilots get that zone set. Nice cut. Say Gordon just finding that spot again in the zone and hits the mid range. Under four minutes to go until halftime, a seven point game. Pilots lead 23 16. The feed to Burnham, strong take to the hoop. Great drive, catch the ball, ready to attack. That ends a three minute drought for Portland and the 6 0 run for LMU. Another steal. Oheim, all hands, the feed to Fowler. What can't she do? She's got eight points now. Again, just when you think LMU starts to handle the press a few times in a row and hasn't turned it over, a turnover leads right to a layup. Johnson has it across the timeline. And no call. Offensive rebound, and Mark gets it to go. She'll head to the line for a three-point play. But Coach Meek seems frustrated. I think he thought that Burnham had her feet set and should have had the charge call on Johnson. Johnson did a nice job of trying to avoid that contact, and I, I don't know if it was where the official was standing possibly, but said to play on, and then, you know, a great offensive rebound and, and put back with the foul. The only thing I could see is the left foot of Burnham, her leg was still slightly moving, and maybe that's why they didn't call it. But Mark, a 60% free throw shooter, missing it there, and Johnson just slapped Fowler in the face, inadvertently trying to slap the ball away, but made contact. And that's Johnson's second foul, and the first one on LMU in this quarter. Really impressed with uh, Alexis Mark and her, just the, the ability around the rim, you know, going after second shots, finishing baskets. She's really kept them in this game. She's a transfer out of Boise State. And she will be a big factor on the boards. Something that Coach Meek said that the Pilots are going to have to be aware of where she is. 
kicks it out to Flug. She missed her first three, sinks that one. Excellent job recognizing the zone by LMU, getting the ball swung on the perimeter, and Rose has got a great look wide open. Portland has hit four threes in the first half. Pass inside and off the hands of Alexis Mark. Playing a little bit faster than they probably want to. Um, it's, it's tough because you beat that initial trap and you think you have something, and then the pilot's doing a great job of rotating. That plays right into Portland's handbook right there. 13 turnovers now for LMU. Again, they average 18 on the season. We're not even at halftime. Moheim wants her third. She's got it. You know, we watched the Pilots work against the zone yesterday and just being really patient. Coach Meek emphasizing the ball gets to the high post, looking opposite for shooters, and that's exactly what you saw there. Rodriguez, she's going to take it herself with Moheim on her and got the underside of the rim. Pilots pushing it up. Fowler, the transition three, short rebound mark. That's the Pilots' first miss in their last five shots. They were on a 6-0 run over the last minute. Seeing if the Pilots can do a better job of keeping it out of the high post. Alexis Mark got fouled. Coach Meek emphasizing high hands, active hands, trying not to allow those direct passes into the high post and the low post. And I think when they they're have LMU on the perimeter and they're just passing the ball back and forth, you know, it really makes it difficult for them. When the ball gets to that high post, just like it did for Portland at the other end, it, it's a great place to attack the zone. Mark missed her first free throw. That could have been a three-point play, and now she's 0 for 2. Near 60%. It's 59.5%. This is only the third free throw attempt for LMU today. As a team, they're 72%, so you'd, you'd want them to get to the line if you're LMU and continue to attack. Foul called. Really doing a, a tough job of trying to deny the post for the pilots. LMU a little bit undersized guarding both those players. You know, are doing all they can to make it difficult to get that ball inside. This is a Meek special. He loves to run the out-of-bounds play from underneath the hoop, and Alex Fowler got fouled. LMU foul number one, Aspen Adams, her first. Adams picks up the foul. That's the fourth team foul on LMU. Fowler's as good as I've seen at drawing fouls. She's so good at getting the contact and, and usually finishing through the contact. Makes her first free throw. She's now got nine points, two rebounds, and two assists. And right now, with the absence of Haley Andrews, how have you thought the guard play has been for Portland so far in this first half. Excellent. I think they're getting just what coach wanted, a collective effort. You know, Rose stepping up, Maddie making threes, um, Mikhail coming in and doing a nice job handling the point position. And most of this has been done for the Pilots without Lucy getting a whole lot of, you know, touches in low and, and baskets. Usually she's a pretty big part of their offense, but LMU's done a nice job. And Lucy has no points so far, 0 for 1 from the field as Aspen Adams heads to the line, misses the free throw. The foul was on Maisie Burnham. That'll be her first. And Portland's seventh team foul. And I don't know if you saw it just before those free throws, but Aspen Adams seemed to get a bit chippy with one of the Portland players. She's getting frustrated with how physical the pilots are. I think it takes its toll, not only physically, but, you know, emotionally, everything. And it just, the pilots are relentless. They're going to keep coming after you. And right now, the turnover is really stacking up for LMU. 13 turnovers. Meanwhile, Portland has turned that into 16 points. Another great opportunity for LMU. Denying the high post, come up with a turnover. Let's see what they can do on offense here in the half court. Adams has it near the top. Gives it up to Ari Johnson. 13 on the shot clock. Pilots went from zone to man, which they were working on yesterday. Mark, the spin move against Cochran, gets it to go. Great move. 
she's been really impressive scoring inside, even against Lucy, who is a tremendous leads the nation in shot blocking. Yeah, Mark, right now the leading scorer for LMU. She's got nine points to go along with three rebounds and an assist. No shot clock. Ten left in the first half. Flug wanting the screen from Cochran. Gives it up to Kai Tu, splitting the defenders, the left hand off the glass, no good. Jasmine Jones got to put it up. And no good, that'll end the first half. It's a 12-point lead for Portland, 34-22. And the Pilots have, doing, have done a great job turning those turnovers into points, and that is the main difference in our game right now. We'll be right back in just a few minutes to talk about the first half and look at some stats. Right now, 12-point lead for the Pilots at home against LMU. Disappointment and adversity can be catalysts for greatness. Kathy Freeman. Somewhere behind the athlete you've become, and the hours of practices, and the coaches who have pushed you, is a little girl who fell in love with the game and never looked back. Play for her. Mia Hamm. I'd rather regret the risks that didn't work out than the chances I didn't take at all. Simone Biles. It's not necessarily about outworking the person across from me. It's outworking that voice inside of my head that says, I'm too tired, I don't feel like doing it, I can settle. Maya Moore. With a defeat, when you lose, you get up, you make it better, you try again. That's what I do in life. When I get down, when I get sick, I don't want to just stop. Everyone always says never give up, but you really have to take that to heart and really do never definitely give up. Keep trying. Serena Williams. Champions keep playing until they get it right. Billie Jean King. In the minds of an ordinary training day, I try to remind myself that I'm preparing for the extraordinary.
I felt like Portland was a gold mine waiting to be tapped into. This place wants to win. There's a lot of support behind us. We just have to put in the work and go do it now. Because we had so many new guys, it was all a new experience for everybody. It was kind of just a bonding experience. Now we are in an entirely new environment, under new coaching, and we kind of get to journey through it together. He's been in our shoes exactly where we're at as far as being a player before. Why Portland? Why is this the right time for you? It's the perfect time, man. Just, it's a sleeping giant here. This is not, you know, it, it could, it's going to be a very, very special job, and it's going to be a special place where people want to come and watch and, and, and play basketball here. That's where we want to be. We want to be slept on like that, and we want people to doubt us because that'll just fuel, fuel our fire so much more. Just having a loud crowd and people that you know are invested in us wanting to win just gives us an, an extra gear to be able to go to and feed off the crowd. Just keep grinding. Wow, what a stick by Robertson. I'll beat my chest. I'll point out to the crowd and stuff. I'm, I'm very much like legs in the sense I play with my heart on my sleeve. Yeah, he's definitely gonna be up and down. He's one of those coaches that just doesn't sit down. The coaching staff from Shante down to TJ, Bobby and Pope really do care about their players. Not only the players, but also the people we are as well. And that connection is so strong. We feel like we're the family and uh, nothing is hidden from one another. Coaches have gone out and found talented guys, but also guys that you want to be in the locker room with and, and, and really hang out and bringing that all together. You're going to see the results on the court for sure. Everyone has helped build the culture that we have now. Steps back, the three. Oh! Christian Scholen giving the Pilots the huge one point Every year, the non-conference is really good for us to figure out the rotations, figure out guys' roles. And it's really good that we're playing a tough non-conference. We usually try to do that to have ourselves battle-tested. Answers with the triple. And it is a new career high for Christian. You know, if you go into somewhere and, and you don't think you can win, then you shouldn't be playing. I think we could beat anybody. And that's, that's the mentality that our team will have. So we're going to play anybody if they want to play us. Good defense. Great defense by Naduka. How clever was that? We just want to establish ourselves, iron out the kinks in preseason play. We're going to play competitive teams. We're going to test ourselves so you get ready for conference play. This is going to be our first year, so everybody's going to be gauging. I believe, I mean, I believe we can win. Um, I'm never going to count my guys out. I'm going to stand behind my guys 100%. If I believe that we can win the conference, then why not? Why not be able to finish number one? It's obviously what we came here to do. We know GU's great, BYU's great, LMU's gotten better again this year. Thinking they're just going to win is just going to be another year against Portland, but they're definitely going to have a rude awakening coming. When I say trust me, we're going we're gonna to get there, trust me, and it's going to be sooner than later.
Well, it's just been a gorgeous day here in the Rose City. Sun shining down. It's not often we get this type of weather in February as the Portland Pilots are holding on to a 12-point lead, 34-22 to inside the Child Center. I'm Brian Slyke, joined by my broadcast partner, Joel Subotka. You know, in the first half, we were worrying about how the Pilots might come out without their all-star guard and Haley Andrews, but Alex Fowler's done a fantastic job in setting them up for success. She really has. You know, a plus 16 uh, while she's in the game. Um, has drawn five fouls, a uh, couple blocks, you know, just doing a little bit of everything like she normally does. Scoring in different ways, got to the foul line, and um, just a, a real presence inside. And I think she puts so much pressure on the defense that it's opened some things up for the Pilots on the perimeter. Yeah, we were just talking off the air. You know, we thought LMU was probably going to double team inside and that's opened up for five triples for the pilots it has and you know again you know with with her running the floor and Alex being that first player down the floor asking for the ball it forces that LMU defense to have to respond and double and triple and next thing you know you're getting some step in threes and the pilots stepping up big knocking those down let's take a look at some of the stats from the first half for these teams. Something that really stood out to me for Portland was their shooting. 56.5% in that first half. They normally shoot at a 44.3% clip. And then the other thing, I just mentioned it, three-point field goals. Five of them in the first half, they're averaging 4.7 on the season. That's been huge. I think, you know, if you talk to Coach Meek, he feels like they have better shooters than they've shown, you know, percentage-wise. And I think you're seeing that a little bit today. And I think some of that, you know, we talked about the collective effort to step up with Haley being out. And you're seeing that from some of the other players. And that's, that's that's tremendous for them to get going like that. And you're looking at the stats that were just on the screen. Zero field goals from behind the from behind the arc for LMU. Now let's take a look at these other stats. Something that's really sticking out to me, the turnovers and the points off turnovers. LMU, they had 13 turnovers in the first half. That led to 16 points. It did, and that was, I think, it, Coach Hughes, one of her huge keys was to take care of the basketball because those turnovers turn into easy baskets, and they set that press again, and they usually come in spurts. And that's where I think the Pilots have been able to extend their lead and their points in the paint too as well. They're getting a lot of layups. You know, they've hit their threes, but they're getting a lot of stuff around the rim. Is there anything else that really stood out to you in the first half between these two teams? Well, I thought, we, you know, we talked about Ari Johnson and, and her ability to attack and get to the rim. She's one for four. Nicole Rodriguez 0 for three, and both of them played almost 18 minutes in that first half. So I think, you know, they're going to need to get them going a little bit scoring-wise to stay in this game. That's Joel Sabak. I'm Brian Slyke. Just a few minutes until the second half is ready to start inside the Child Center. Pilots leading by 12, 34-22. Don't go anywhere.
Here's a look at Coach Meek, up to a 12-point lead over his former student athlete, Coach Hughes. Coach Hughes played for Mike Meek at Southridge High School before having a stellar career at USC. But Meek, again, leading this team for Portland has just done a terrific job in a short amount of time. And I think you could probably back me up on this. It's the way he teaches the game. And, you know, looking at his practices, you look at some of the men's practices. They're constantly going, going, going. Meek breaks it down. He stops them almost every couple of minutes to teach them exactly what they should be looking for and how to execute. He really does. And, you know, he does as good a job as anybody at coming up with concepts, adjustments. But I, I think he'll be the first to tell you, though, that he's got a great group to work with. He's yeah, got absolutely. a willing group, willing listeners, great leaders. And you can see it in their practice. They're focused. They understand what, the, what they're trying to get done. And, and they're able to adjust and make some great game adjustments. Well, he certainly has them prepared for this game against LMU as they're out there starting point guard Haley Andrews, who suffered an unfortunate injury in that win against BYU. But the ladies are holding tough right now for Portland. They really are. We talked about that collective effort to pick up that loss. That's a huge loss. And uh, so far, so good. Um, seeing a great, great energy from the Portland bench as well. Flew getting the start for Andrews. She had seven points in that first half, three assists and two rebounds. Ellen, you start in the zone again. Another good look from three. Mark hands it off to Rodriguez. Gordon's pass into that open area to Johnson near the free throw line. Picks up her dribble. Jasmine Jones pulls up over Cochran. A nice look from Johnson. And Dope, Jasmine Jones and Alexis Marth have been impressive around the rim scoring. One adjustment you might see there they made was putting Johnson at the high post, letting her create and make some plays. Quick pass inside to Fowler. Great pass. The Aussie connection coming through again. So good at sealing off and getting position, you know, and coming up with layups. Really hard to defend that on all sides of the floor. I mean, usually Fowler gets her hands on the ball. It's going in the hoop. She's got near. 570 career made field goals as that one ends up out of bounds. Great anticipation by Rose Flug and forces the turnover again. Pilots press still causing problems. You know, you can make the case that Flug could have been the MVP in that game against BYU with how she performed. And she has not fallen off at all to start this game. And now we're in the second half. Fowler trying to find Cochran, gives it up to Frawley. The extra pass to Flug. Off iron, far side. And Mark, keeping the ball alive, gives it up to Johnson after the rebound. A tough play for LMU. They tried to get that quick transition bucket, but Cochran and Moheim ended up with the steal. I thought Gordon had all ball on that block. It was a nice play. Again, Flug being aggressive, though, in transition, getting to the brim and forcing the call. So Portland will head to the free throw line. Only four attempts on the day so far. And there was that play in transition, and Moheim ended up with it right in her hands. Flug, a 66.7% free throw shooter, missing the first one. You mentioned previously, LMU had a transition opportunity, which have been few and far between, and you don't get capitalized and get a bucket. It really hurts. Flug, a local product from Sunset High School here in Portland, Oregon, a transfer from Pepperdine. She goes 0 for 2 from the charity stripe, and that's not like this Portland team to come up empty. Portland not quite as aggressive in the zone. Rodriguez, I thought she was going to pull up for the shot. Found the extra pass, and Fowler ends up with the rebound. Foul called, and I think that'll be on Alexis Mark. Unlucky there. What a great look by Rodriguez. Again, finding the middle of the zone, looking down. Opportunity for a layup, and it just doesn't go down. Mark picks up her third personal. That'll be the first one on the Lions in this half. We're going up against Rodriguez. Cochran has not scored yet. Pulls up from mid-range. And I feel like she had an opportunity to take that one all the way, and she didn't. She had a layup there, and I think she just sort of settled. She is a good mid-range shooter, but had a chance for the layup. Again, she's coming off a career-high 18 points in that win against number 16 BYU on Thursday. 
Portland's adjusted, really trying to keep the ball out of the high post if they can. Nice flash by LMU. Moheim in front of Kari Clark. Clark off the mark. Cochran just makes it so difficult down there. If she doesn't block it, she usually changes it. Frawley with it. Back to Flug. Skip pass to Moheim. Jones doing a good job on Fowler on the low block. Both posts for LMU are really active, denying, making it hard to play, you know, high-low basketball. Flug looking for some help. Six on the shot clock. Great move by Fowler to get past the defender, and she'll head to the line. Great patience by the pilots. You know, Alex working down there. Continues to work, trusts her teammate. And it's just a tough matchup for Rodriguez at that point. And Rodriguez bit for the out, and she's twisted back in underneath the hoop. And that's what makes Fowler just so dangerous. There's not really a textbook way to stop her. She now has 13 points. And she misses that free throw. Now three for five from the line. Transition opportunity. Cassie Gordon gets fouled. She'll shoot two. One of the rare times LMU's been able to get a rebound, outlet it, and get down the floor and get a good opportunity in transition. Typically, the pilots have been able to set their press. Even on missed shots, they've been able to slow them down. I think that's going to be something you see an adjustment from the Lions where they want those guards to get out and go a little bit. Frawley just picked up her four, or a third personal foul, excuse me. So MJ Bruno checking in as Cassie Gordon missing the free throw short. And she doesn't do that often. She's a 78% free throw shooter. Knocks down the second one. Now, we were talking at the break. Bruno came in for Frawley, and those two very similar in how they play on defense. And you're not losing much on that side of the ball. No drop off in the defensive intensity, and I thought MJ got to the rim, had an early layup too as well, yeah. and, and kind of keeps that momentum going. You know, it's nice to be able to go to your bench and, and have that energy stay the same or even pick it up a little bit. Yeah, she's starting to get more comfortable with the flow of the game. Not a big score early on in the season, but had quite a few buckets against BYU, including a four-point play in the corner. Helen you back in the zone on the out-of-bounds play. Inside to Fowler, double-teamed. I can't tell if that was Jones or Mandel. That'll pick up the foul. So difficult when Alex gets that deep under the rim, uses her body to, to get great position. It seemed like she just got a bit too much underneath the basket right there, though. Just pulled a chair out from under her, but back to the free throw line. Nothing but net on that shot. Jones picked up the foul. That'll be her second, the fourth one on the Lions in the quarter. And they have to be careful with six and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. The next foul will put the Pilots on the line for two. And Mikkel Meek checking back into the game. And we were talking to Coach Hughes before the game. She thought it was so weird to try to come up with a scouting report on Mikkel Meek. Somebody she used to babysit when Mikkel was only two years old. Right. I don't know if the last time she saw Mikkel that she was the shooter that she is today. Former 6A Oregon Player of the Year. There's Johnson at the high post again. Looking to attack that soft spot in the zone. And that's only the second three-point shot. And Flug falling out of bounds, gave it up to Johnson. She quickly turns it into two. And that's don't, their first field goal in three and a half minutes. It is, and her first field goal in a long time. You don't want to get her going. If, if you're LMU, you love to see that, and I think Johnson needs to get more aggressive. So far, those are... Johnson only has four points right now. And we've got another turnover. Looking at a backdoor cut, just let her a little bit too much. But again, a good action. Full court pressure again. Bruno trying to get the steal on the inbound. Here comes the trap. Picks up the dribble. Johnson now has it. She'll pull up from the free throw line. Sinks it. Excellent job by LMU. Having Johnson as the second pass, and then she's the attacker against the press rather than the person getting trapped. It seems that seems to be the halftime adjustment that Coach Hughes has made, trying to get Johnson more open and flew frustrated with herself, leading Cochran too far. Coach Meek looking for a hold on the backdoor cut by Cochran. Two passes in a row that have gotten away on back doors, trying to take away, alleviate some of that pressure from the Lions. 
And a foul called on MJ Bruno. That'll be her third personal foul and the second one on the Pilots in this quarter. Pilots have had three turnovers in the last minute and 15 seconds. Johnson thought she might take it all the way. Cassie Gordon will take it back out. Fowler on defense, well beyond the three-point line. Gordon, the transfer from Georgetown. Again, great look inside, and that's Rodriguez at the high post. LMU's finding a rhythm here in this third quarter. They're only down by nine. The largest lead was 15. LMU is on a 6-0 run over the last minute. Flew pulling up, sticks it from the WCC symbol. Similar to Thursday night, you know, they needed a bucket. Big possession, and there's Rose knocking down a huge shot for them. Flug now has eight. Bruno pokes yeah. it away. Tremendous hustle. Didn't give up on the play. And now we've got a foul. That'll be on Cassie Gordon. That'll be her second, and the team's fifth. And that means Flug will head to the line after the media break. It's an 11-point lead for Portland, 42-31. Getting inside, doing a great job, keeping the pilots ahead. There you get a look at Haley Andrews, one of the team leaders for Portland. She's averaging just under 12 points, and you see 5.7 assists. That ranks 16th in the nation before she went down with that injury against BYU. No doubt a huge spot to miss out for the Pilots for the remainder of the season. Such a competitor, so passionate, and such a leader. I mean, just someone that the teammates want to follow. You know, you and I were just talking at the break. LMU seemed to make some big strides in adjusting both on the press for the Pilots and in the half-court zone as Flug sinks the first of her two free throws out of the break. Yeah, I think, you know, we talked about getting Johnson going a little bit, and they moved Ari more to the second line against the press and letting her attack three on two with numbers going the other way, and even against the zone, putting her and Rodriguez at the high post where they can make shots and attack, and it's worked so far. Pass gets to Jones, back to Johnson. MJ is so active with high hands in her rotation. There's Rodriguez at the high post again. There you go. Can't get the friendly bounce, though. And it'll be pilot basketball. Coach Meek stressed yesterday in the zone, the high hands getting deflections as those deflections lead to steals, and usually the steals lead to layups. And it looks like they're back into a zone for LMU. They are back in the zone. Portland very patient against the zone, looking for a good look. There it is. Meek puts up the three, all iron. Jones, the rebound, she falls to the ground. Got the dribble, though, and avoids the travel. It was a good shot. Throw it into Cochran. They double, kick it back out, and 
A good look for Meek. Elmuse hit their last three shots from the field. And now they're starting to out-rebound Portland as well. Cassie Gordon drills it from about six feet out. Yeah, that's a little bit too low against the zone. A too good a look, I think, for, for Portland to give up. But a credit to LMU. They're doing a great job attacking that high post. Gordon now has seven. And Kai Tu picks up the foul, trying to reach in and get the ball back. That'll be her third personal. And the third one on the Pilots in the quarter. So a 10-point lead right now for Portland. Rodriguez is going to have to move that ball up. She just gets it across the timeline. It's loose. Bruno's going for it with Meek. And we've got a jump ball. It'll stay with the Lions. You just don't know when that trap's coming at times. And uh, I think that constant pressure, it just gets them sped up a little bit. And they're going to have to be careful. Rodriguez had her back to the entire court when she got into that corner, and that's the perfect opportunity for the Pilots to trap. Yeah, they get her sped up, get her playing a little bit up the sideline, and then that trap comes from behind. Johnson picks up her dribble, finds Mandel. Cassie Gordon gets it into Jones. Burnham on defense. Jones, great spin move inside and gets it off the glass. Very impressed with Jones, finishing around the rim, attacking. Again, from that high post area. Some fresh legs about to come in for Portland. Four new players. Bruno puts up the three and one and done. Ellen Mew trying to push it up. It's Rodriguez. They don't have the numbers. She stops, kicks it out to Gordon. And Mandel tried to go for the shot, and I think that was Kai Tutu, and that'll be her fourth if they call it on her. And they do. LMU with a rare opportunity in transition. Rodriguez advances the ball, pushes it in transition, and they end up getting a, a layup look and a draw a foul and go to line for two. Fresh legs out there. Fowler, Flug, Frawley, and Moheim. Definitely changed with Fowler out of the game. The ability to go inside for the Pilots. They settled for some threes, I thought. This pilot defense, it all comes back together from Coach Meek. And Br Bruno's learning as a freshman. Defense is what's getting you on the court. I don't know. Defense has always been my little niche, even when I was younger. My mom always made me play against the biggest girls. She said, it's not about size, it's about your heart and if you want it more. And so I've always just, defense has always been my thing. Offense has always been a little bit harder. <laughs> I've had to work a lot on my offensive game, but... Defense has always come easy to me. That's kind of my, my favorite thing to do. It's a good mindset to have. I mean, we always hear about the kids who are putting the ball in the basket, scoring high points, but your defense as a young woman, young man on campus, that's what's really going to get you on the court. You're going to find a way to get out there. And if you don't start the game, you might finish the game because uh, especially the way the pilots play, she's perfect for this system. And Johnson picks up the foul. That'll be her third personal. And the sixth one on the Lions. And that'll send Cochran to the line, who's been held scoreless so far today. And there she hits the free throw. The transfer from Oregon, 65.5% free throw shooter. Made it difficult for her to catch the ball, and they pressured her on the perimeter. She's very good stepping away from the rim, but just hasn't had a lot of opportunities today. I was going to say, she's been double teamed quite a bit in the paint or on the block. See, there's the rotation there. It's a long way for Lucy to run. I think you want Johnson making that second pass, you know, and leading to the basket instead of being the first one to get the inbounds pass. Seven-point lead. Mohai puts up the three. No good. And off the top of the backboard and go out of bounds to LMU basketball. Lions hanging around down seven. Getting some easy baskets, getting to the free throw line. I think that's the way you crawl back into this game. And they've hit their last six shots, and it also helps that Portwin has not hit a field goal in over three minutes. Near turnover there. Kari Clark had it, and we got to travel. I think she thought that one came out, and then she regathered it, but the referee is calling a travel. Cochran's such a presence inside, whether, like I said, if she blocks it, changes it, she's so good with her hands. She is held without a block so far, and she averaged 4.1 coming into this week, which led the nation. 
Frawley steps in, gives it up to Fowler, and can't hit the short range jumper. Again, the field goal drought continues, three minutes and 30 seconds. Clark using the glass. A little most of their own medicine there. They ran Clark to the first post, settled in, got a nice deep catch, and finished. One of the few times, again, LMU's been able to get out in transition and get an easy basket. Frawley back to Flug. Rodriguez left her and short again. Frawley goes up for the board, whipped away by Clark. And we've got some physicality on the court and a timeout called by Coach Hughes with under 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. And LMU hanging tight. They're back within five. At one point, they were down by 15, but a four-minute field goal drought for Portland has the Lions back in at 45-40 inside the Child Center. We'll be back. Point lead right now for the Pilots. And coming up in a huge way for the Pilots so far, it's Rose Flug. 11 points, four assists, stepping up in the absence of Haley Andrews. Huge game from Rose, and I think they're going to need that. They're going to need that down the stretch. He's going to need some big baskets. Well, the Pilots have not been able to stop the Lions here over the last five minutes or so. The Lions have hit seven of their last seven from the field. And you and I were just talking. They're not exactly incredibly tough shots. They're getting to the hoop. Credit to LMU adjustments they made. They got out in transition, got some easy baskets, and also finding the middle of that zone, finding a soft spot and knocking down shots. Coach Hughes mentioned that they needed to make some shots. They didn't do that on Thursday, and they were hoping to do more of that. About a 10. Second difference between shot clock and game clock. Two seconds on the shot clock. Clark goes up. And the Pilots come down with a rebound. They got to push it up. Six seconds left to go in the third quarter. Flug has it. Gives it up to Molheim. She's trying to find an open. Has to put it up. And I don't know if she even got it off before the buzzer, but it doesn't count anyways. It was short. And it's a 45-40 lead for Portland. LMU, you got to give them credit. Coming out of halftime, they made the adjustments, and they've closed down on this lead for Portland. We head to the fourth. Five-point lead for Portland.
an explosive third quarter for LMU. They had 18 points in the third quarter alone at 22 points at halftime. They exploded, and part of that goes with how the Pilots' offense has been going, shooting only 27% in that third quarter. And I think credit to LMU on defense. You know, they got stops. They were able to get out and run in transition. Portland was unable to set their press like they were doing in the first half. It seemed like they were always in the press. Uh, you know, third quarter, LMU was out pushing the ball in transition. They even attacked the press better, got Johnson in, in some adv advantageous situations to make some plays and it paid off. Frawley set to inbound for Portland. Final 10 minutes, and they're holding on to a five-point lead. Got two different pilots in double figures. Molheim had three triples in the first half, and she's been cold here in the second. I think if you're LMU, you're, you're okay with Portland settling for some threes as opposed to, you know, Fowler or Cochran down low scoring or getting to the free throw line. Pilots swinging around. Trying that backdoor cut to Fowler. Perfect pass from Mulheim. Just over the arm of Clark. Set play by the Pilots. Coach Meek as good as anyone at coming out of a timeout or a quarter with a set play to get yourself a layup and right the ship a little bit. Set the press. Rodriguez inadvertently picked up her dribble. Gordon flashes into that open zone. Fowler tips it to herself, another rebound. It again, went to the high post, but that time it was a contested shot. Made it a little bit more difficult. Flug has it. LMU in a zone. Pass tipped. Tried to throw it off of Fowler, and it looked like Clark stepped on the end line, so it'll stay with Portland. All out of balance, awarded to the Pilots. The short corners and the high post are available for the Pilots. That's the time they were looking for Fowler and then looking for Cochran diving to the rim. You can see a concerted effort to get the ball inside a little bit more by the Pilots. Cochran trying to get position. Fowler near the baseline. Back to Flug. Off the mark again. The Pilots have been cold from behind the arc here in the second half. Those are good shots. The ball goes inside first. You get the double to the triple team, and you gotta, you got to knock those down when they're open. Now 0 for 7 from behind the arc in the second half. And you know, the Portland coach is calling for the high hands, making it difficult. Frawley, one of the better defenders for Portland. He's dealing with some foul trouble, so Johnson smartly goes up against her, takes it all the way. It's a tough matchup. When Johnson gets it to the high post, she can score it from there. She can put it down, obviously, and get to the rim. Johnson now has eight points. Pass it around to Frawley. And not her best shot from behind the arc. A little bit rushed. She can hit it. She's a great three-point shooter coming out of high school before she came stateside. Baseline jumper by Clark over Cochran. Now Lucy does not have a block yet. She's got a block in every single game this season so far. You can see the confidence rising in LMU each time. I think they're getting a little bit comfortable offensively and moving the ball and finding open shots. Three-point lead now. Moheim trying to double it, and Cochran gets the offensive rebound. Huge offensive rebound. Only the fourth one in the game for Portland. Moheim lets loose. No pilot can find any type of luck from behind the arc right now. And we've got a foul off ball. And I believe that one will be called on Clark. That'll be her second and the team's first here in the fourth. Pilots on a two and a half minute drought as Moheim and Frawley. They're getting some great looks from three. It'd be nice to see Alex touch it a little bit at the high post as well. Here's the inbound as Bruno and Meek have now checked in. There's somebody we haven't seen a lot of in the second half is Maisie Burnham as Mikkel Meek can't get the triple to go. And they're saying it's off of Alex Fowler. Lions basketball, and that one's tough. Here's another look at it. We'll see. I don't know. I think Fowler might have had a case there. Yeah, I think so. As Mark was the last one to hit it out of her hands. Johnson high over the arm in reach of Cochran. 
And She's got end. the Lions back within one. That's what Coach Meek talked about, was her ability to go from end to end with the ball and score it. And see her confidence growing. This is the closest this game has been since the first quarter. The Pilots have missed 10 straight threes, make it 11. And now LMU has a chance to take the lead. They've hit their last shot, uh, three shots. They're on a 6-0 run. A steal by Meek. Keeping the defender off of her and the lay-in. Tremendous play. What a momentum swing. The Pilots needed something. Need an easy basket. And Meek with a huge play. That ends a three-minute and 15-second drought. And the Pilots are just one of their last seven from the field. You can hear the fans get into it. And Cassie Gordon sticks it in the mid-range. And now back to a one-point lead for Portland. Nice flash, and again, uncontested. You gotta get the hand up, make that a little bit tougher shot. Bruno held onto it now. She's gonna drive and blocked by Jones. Johnson looking for an opening, the floater. And that'll give LMU a one-point lead with 5.40 left to go. And Coach Meek calling a timeout after the Lions come back from over 15 points down. And they now lead by one. That'll take us to the media break. 50-49, to 49, LMU taking a late lead over the Pilots. 5.41 left to go in our game. Welcome back inside the Child Center. 541 left to go in this game, and it's a one-point lead for LMU. They stormed back from a 15-point deficit at one point. And now they control their own destiny inside the Child Center. And one of the big reasons is Ari Johnson. She had two points in that first half, and she has had 10 points alone in the second half. Tremendous adjustments, getting her going in transition. They're getting stops defensively, and then her active at the high post against Portland's zone. Now, Portland has struggled here as of late. What would you like to see the Pilots do to try to get some offense going for them? I'd like to see the post touch the ball, maybe at the high post, the short corner, but not settle. You know, the threes, if they go in and out, are one thing, but... Get an opportunity to move the ball. Fowler got in trouble near the short corner, and Moheim's shot is no good. And is now 12 straight misses from behind the arc for Portland. LMU doing a great job of swarming Alex whenever she touches it. Fowler's got 17 points. She had nine in the first half. Alexis Mark drives baseline, great pass to try to find Kari Clark splitting between Cochran and Fowler, but Bruno gets her hand on it. Great hands, great rotation. Again, I, you know, Coach Meek says that is Bruno is so good at rotating, whether it's the press or the zone, really active. Jones putting up the shot just to beat the shot clock and an offensive rebound. 
Johnson dribbled it off of herself, a turnover. That's now 21 in the game for LMU. Great job by Meek, knocking that ball off her foot. Again, those little plays that don't always show up in the box score, but are huge at a, in a one-point game. Right now, rebounding is a category to keep your eye on. LMU out-rebounding Portland by 10. That's led to a couple of second-chance opportunities. Fowler got fouled. She'll head to the line, and I think that was on Johnson, and she's going to have to be careful because if it was, that's her fourth. And no, it's on Alexis Mark. It's her fourth and the second team foul. Great flash by the pilots to the high post and be able to get Alex the ball around the basket, get her back to the free throw line. Fowler making the first one. She was five for, for seven before that free throw. LMU is so focused on Lucy and Alex. MJ made a nice flash in there, able to catch it and draw some defenders to get them an opportunity. Now the pilots can set the press with the made free throw. The two made free throws gives the pilots back a one point lead. Rodriguez almost lost it. Bruno rotates in front of Jones. Clark, baseline jumper. No good. And is that going to be on Moheim? I think it is. Cassie Gordon was going up in Moheim, trying to box her out, picks up the foul. First team foul this quarter. First personal foul on Moheim, and the first one on the Pilots. Again, only three shots from behind the arc for LMU. Normally something that they rely on, but they're in this game, trailing by one, 0 for 3 from behind the arc. Johnson, another strong take, and she'll head to the line. She's hyped about it. Bruno picks up the foul. She's really tough when she gets it at that high post because she can score it from there. You play her, and she's very, very good getting to the rim. Um, draws the contact and, and also finishes. This could push the lead to two for LMU. Bruno picks up her fourth personal and the second one on the Pilots in this quarter. And Johnson now has 15 points. Bruno out, Frawley back in. Again, those two similar defensively, so hopefully they can pick something up the next time that LMU is on their side of the court. I think keeping them fresh at this point is huge too. High post to Cochran. He's looking for Fowler as the Pilots swing it around the outside. Johnson cuts off Frawley. Moheim's three. Finally, Pilots get some life from behind the arc, and they retake the lead. Such a great look by Alex. Cross court against the zone. She draws two. Great look for Maddie. That ends 13 consecutive misses from behind the arc, and the Pilots needed that one badly. Gordon, again, finding that opening in the zone, hitting the elbow jumper. LMU doing a tremendous job of flashing from the weak side, and it's tough to see for Portland's guards at the top of the zone, and give them credit, they're knocking down some tough shots. This team, and I'm talking about LMU, has lived in the brain of these pilots since they lost to him in the WCC tournament. I'm talking with Coach Meek before this game, you know, that that loss in that tournament fueled them during their postseason run, but nobody on that team for the Pilots thought they gave their best effort, and right now, they're having a tough contest. Meek tries to take it, they get a charge call. Johnson steps in the way. Meek will pick up her first and the third one on the Pilots, and the struggles continue offensively for Portland, just two of their last 10. LMU is incredibly active in that zone, making it tough to get anything in the inside and then forcing everything to the perimeter. Pilots need to create some offense from their defense. They got a lot of that in the first half, and I think those easy baskets, they, they could use some of those right now. Yeah, most of the turnovers we've seen by LMU in this second half usually resulted in a dead ball. Instead there of transition, there you got it. Frawley moving up the court, gives it up to Flug. This is where they usually find Fowler. Frawley going for the three, off the mark. Tips tip. back to Fowler, and one! She's headed to the line! 
I don't know if that was on purpose, but Cochran, that tip back to Fowler, huge. I think it was. She's a heady player. That was a great play. And you get Fowler finishing again with the contact and the end one. You see it there. That was a lot more deliberate than it looked like originally. Great heads up play by Cochran, but the Pilots can't turn it into three. They'll hold on to the one point lead. Able to get back into the press, though, even on the miss. And the ball through the hands of Clark. We saw more of that in the first half, that, that tenacity and the kind of the aggressiveness of the pilots in the press, and it forced those turnovers on consecutive possessions, and you saw it right there again. LMU staying in the zone, really trying to know where Fowler and Cochran are and limit those opportunities. Skip pass, just low for Molheim. 13 on the shot clock. Frawley with it. So we're under two minutes left to go. And the great steal by Johnson. She read it the entire way. Can't she give her team the lead back? We got a foul. And they're going to count that one. Wow. They can't believe it. Some of the fans in here can't believe it. They thought she was on the ground. And Moheim slow to get up right now. And they are going to count that one. Moheim picks up her third foul. Little NBA continuation. You can hear some of the fans still not pleased with that last call. Even Fowler trying to get an understanding. Flug talking to the referee right now in the paint. Johnson's so poised and just such a great score in transition. Here's another look at it. Tries to go. She might have seen the dip in the shoulder, but not a huge push off. But you can see why the pilot faithful were upset with the no call. Big free throw there. With that miss, it remains a one-point game. Into the corner to Mohan. Skip to Frawley. Again, you can see they're trying to look inside. Get it to Fowler or Cochran. They're just not having any luck. They settle for the three. Rose Food Again. Ice water in her veins there. Two games in a row. Some big baskets. You mentioned it at halftime. 13 points now for Rose Flug. A two-point lead, under a minute to go. LMU has had success here in this half, mainly with Johnson. The floater will go. And she now has 19 points, 17 of them here in the second half. Tremendous effort from Johnson, just really leading them back. And the Pilots will call a timeout with 39.1 seconds left in a tie ball game, 59 all. You're under 40 seconds, Joel. What do you think Coach Meek is drawing up for the Pilots right here? I think you definitely want Alex to touch the ball, whether they double it or not. I think you're going to see the ball go either to the short corner, the high post, and it may end up getting skipped out to a shooter, and they may have to take a good look at a three, but I think you're going to want to go inside and see if you get Alex in there, maybe even get to the foul line. Meanwhile, for LMU, what do you think they're talking about in their huddle right now? I think they're going to continue to do what they've been doing, really swarm the post, make it hard, and dare someone else to take a three-point shot. You know, I, I think Johnson's just been really good at that high post. I think Lucy's been a little bit timid at going out and making that block because she can also drop it off to that post. But at this point, I think Johnson's just in a scoring mode. Yeah, she's been unstoppable here in the second half. Again, two points at halftime. She now has 17. The thing to keep an eye on, though, if this game goes to overtime, Johnson's got four personal fouls. Is that something that LMU might have to keep an eye on, depending on this possession for Portland? Definitely, and she had that, took that charge uh, not that long ago that could have maybe gone either way as well. So I just, I really like the way she competes. And this LMU team, you got to give them credit. They were down big um, and, and looking fatigued and, and have made some adjustments and have really rallied. Portland just before halftime held a 15-point lead. And then LMU shot lights out in that third quarter at 67%. Really got them back into it. And now we've got a tie ball game here. Under 40 seconds to go, 59 all. Flug inbounding. Flug with a huge three just moments ago. Fowler at the high post. LMU matching up right now in the zone. Just staying with Fowler when she goes to the high post, matching with Cochran, making it really difficult. I think they need some cutters. Great move by Fowler to step out. Found Cochran. Can't get it to go. Got her own rebound. 
partially blocked. Clark has it. And a timeout called with 14.2 seconds left. Fowler got the pass she wanted into Cochran. Cochran was short on the first attempt, got her own rebound, and I did not see who got a hand on that block. It looks to be Jones. And it was Jasmine Jones got just enough of the ball on Cochran's second shot. Excellent defensive play. You know, if you're the pilots, that's where you wanted to go. Uh, Lucy, a little bit sped up on that. Almost it, it, sometimes you want to slow down and force that official to have to call the foul. Right now, for the Lions, you have to be thinking they're giving the ball to Ari Johnson. She's been so effective in the second half. Are you setting something up for her to get the second pass, or is she taking the inbound and just let her do her thing, iso ball? Well, it'll be interesting to see what the pilots do. Will they pick up full court and press like they have all game, um, which could get her in a transition situation. But I expect if she doesn't have something coming down the floor, you're going to see her at the high post, maybe flashing in there to try to make a play for herself, for a teammate, even get to the foul line. Yeah, thinking back to halftime, we weren't sure how this game was going to end up. It just seemed like Portland was absolutely dominating that first half. And things had just slowed down here in the second half for them. They haven't been shooting the ball as well as they did in that first half. And again, credit LMU, though. They made some adjustments. They found the opening in the zone, and they started to hit their shots. They did, and I think by getting stops defensively, you know, LMU it was unable for Portland to set their press, and that was a big part of that first half. Those turnovers were turning into baskets, and we haven't seen a lot of those live ball turnovers turn into layups. And like you said, credit to LMU, the adjustments they made were, have been really, really impactful. So 13.1, the ball advances on the timeout. So it's on LMU's side of the court. Cassie Gordon going to inbound. Interesting to see if Portland will match up or just go stay in the zone and then switch to a man. It almost looks like they're matching up defensively as Coach Hughes getting some last second, a last second chat with Rodriguez on the court. If you're LMU, this is the type of situation you want a player like Johnson, her ability to score the basketball. Again, 17 points in the second half. 10 on the clock. They swing it around. I think they're trying to get it to Rodriguez. Looking inside. Five on the clock. Jones has it going up against Cochran. Oh, she gets the roll in on the front of the rim with 1.4 seconds left and a timeout called by Coach Meek. A two-point lead for LMU. Tremendous adjustment. I think everybody in here thought Johnson was going to look to attack and make a play, and they went inside. And Jones with a nice, nice post move. Well, with the timeout, that ball is going to advance past half court for Coach Meek and the Pilots. 1.4 seconds left. Is that enough time to get a pass inside, you think? Or is that, you're gonna have to settle for an outside shot? Well, if you throw something in direct, um, I, I think you might. Uh, Coach Meeks is as good as anybody having some special situation type plays, but uh, you know, you might be able to get Alex at the elbow, somewhere at the high post off the direct pass and it'll allow for a dribble and then a shot. Um, I don't think you're gonna be able to make two passes and still get a good look. So you're looking for Fowler here on this last possession. I would. I would expect maybe a, a, a screen and then a flash and then her maybe putting it down and seeing if she can't attack. Um, you know, you want to get the shot up. I don't think you're going to have a lot of opportunity for an offensive rebound depending on how, time, how quick you shoot it. But you can see LMU talking about high hands and trying to bother that pass and not allow. One thing that LMU does not want to do is foul as well. Fowler, 7 of 10 from the free throw line, 7 of 9 from the field in general. She's been very efficient, but just hasn't really had anything going in the second half. She's been mainly making uh, her damage at the free throw line. Yeah, the zone has really kind of just, you know, doubled her in the zone and sort of blanketed her, and then she hasn't had the opportunity in transition like she did in the first half. There we go, 1.6 seconds. They added 0.2 seconds onto the clock. 61-59. Moheim to inbound, and they put Kari Clark on the inbounder. Tall body, long reach for her. Well, Backdoor lob. cut to Fowler, and Knocked it's away. tipped up by LMU, and the Lions have completed the comeback on the Pilots. Look to go with a back screen lob to Fowler, and I think it was Rodriguez who made a nice read and got a hand on it, knocked it away. Pilots in shock, disbelief after the Lions come back from 15 down in the first half and come back with a 61-59 win in the final seconds.
Well, Joel, it was an exciting game between these two. Really back and forth here at the end, but what were your thoughts? Well, I think the adjustments that, and, and that Coach Hughes made with LMU, I think it settled them down. They got their score back. Johnson started to make some plays. They never really panicked, even though they were down 15 at one point. And I felt like they just, their their defensive intensity increased, which allowed them to be out and play. And I thought the Pilots, you know, it, it was just a tough night in the second half shooting the ball. Well, Coach Hughes picks up her first coaching win against her old coach, Mike Meek, with a 61-59 victory. But Ari Johnson, the star of the show, two points in that first half, 17 in the second half. And that helped the Lions come back for the victory, 61-59. I'm Brian Slag. That's Joel Sabaka. Stick around. We got men's basketball coming up just a little bit.